Hello and welcome everyone. In the previous video we learned about how to set up the Tailwind CSS and Post CSS as well as SaaS and in this video we're going to learn about how to set up Apollo Client and connect with GraphQL. Awesome, let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is go on to our front-end directory into the terminal and then we're going we're going to run npm install Apollo client and also GraphQL. And let's hit enter. And while this installs it, let's take a look how this Apollo client is working. So while this installs it, let's take a look at what is this Apollo client. So as you can see, Apollo client is actually a state management library for JavaScript, right? So what does it do? Why do we actually need it? Uh, well, it enables you to manage both local and remote data with GraphQL and you can easily fetch, cache, modify application data. It normalizes the data for you as well. And all of this while automatically updating your UI. Okay, so you can read more. You can read more about it as to what are the benefits of Apollo over here. But let's get started. Uh, I think by this time it's already must have been installed, right? You. Okay, so we've already installed it and how to set it up. So you can see that you have to import Apollo and in-memory cache. Let's go to our front end and inside of front end, we go to source and we'll create a directory called Apollo. And inside of this, we're going to create a file called, called client.js. And inside of the client.js, we are going to use we're going to import the Apollo client and in-memory cache from here. And there's one more thing we need to import and that's create HTTP link. Okay, so we're going to use that. And, and then we're just going to use this client. We're going to initialize this Apollo client. Okay, and then store it inside of the client. And it needs the URI of basically wherever you want to fetch the data from. So in our case, we want to fetch it from WordPress. So that's the URL we need. So so remember we installed the WP GraphQL plugin. So it actually converts your WordPress into a GraphQL server and then you'll be able to query the WordPress data on slash GraphQL. So let's say this is your WordPress uh, URL, like for example, example.com. Okay. so if you hit slash GraphQL, you can see that it needs, you can actually fetch it. It's just saying that you don't have any query that you're making, but yeah, you can access your data on the slash GraphQL. Okay, awesome. So what we wanna do is we wanna pass this URL to our Apollo client, so how do we do it? Well, of course, we don't want to expose our uh, backend URL to everyone, so we wanna hide it. So it won't be good to just keep that uh, WordPress URL uh, publicly available here. We can very well use our environment file. So let's see how that works in Next.js. So in environment variables Next.js. Okay, take a look, basic features. So it talks about that there are different ways you can create the environment variables. Let's take a look. You can create a .env, okay? There will be situations where we will need the uh, the URL on the client side as well. For example, when we are creating the uh, load mode, etc., or maybe a form submission, that's the time we are going to be able to we want to be able to access the backend URL uh, on the client side as well. So for that, what we have available is that if you create the .env .local and you prefix it with next public, it's going to be available on the front end as well, right? On the client side as well. So let's do that. So we'll create an env.example. So first thing we're gonna do is we will create .env-example. So this will be an example file for anyone to take a look at the shape of what we actually need. So we're gonna put that there. So next public, WordPress site URL. So actually our environment variables would very well be just WordPress site URL, but because we want it in the front end as well. So that's that's why we're just prefixing it with next underscore public. 
as the documentation says that prefix it with next underscore public underscore yeah okay great perfect so we've got that and um, of course this is an example so this won't work uh, let's just copy it paste it again but this time remove the dot env uh, sorry remove the dash example okay so the, our front end currently is at localhost 3000. So if you notice, this is where it lies. And our back end is at localhost 8020. So if you notice, this is where our back end is, 8020. Uh, in your case, if it's a, a different URL, if you're using MAMP or any other setup for WordPress backend, then make sure to replace this localhost 8020 with your own WordPress site URL, okay? So you've got that setup, which is brilliant. All I have to do now is access pass this to my client.js over here okay okay now we are also going to pull the create HTTP link over here like so okay and then what we're gonna do is we will pull this into a different constant so I'm gonna put it like so and I'm gonna set the cache value to false for now if you want caching you can use it but I'm just going to set the resulting cache value to false. I want to ensure that if I make any changes in the back end, I want to be able to see in the front end quickly uh, as I'm developing. And um, and we can also store the link inside of this. So we'll say create HTTP link, and then we're gonna put the URI inside of it. Okay. And then we can just simply replace this with cache, replace the URI with link and then for default options we'll pass the default options like so All right okay and then finally I'm just going to export default client client that's it okay and of course we have to change this to our WordPress site URL so how do we do that so remember that we have this URL available so all I'm going to do is just say process.env so we'll have this available inside process.env so we'll say process.env next public wordpress site url and slash graphql okay awesome you can also console it and check whether you're actually getting it so i'll just do console and see what we get on the front end i'll say npm run dev just to start a development server let's go back thing we want to do is come to pages and then app.js and remember that anything that we wrap over here will be available to all the components so what we can do is we can say Apollo provider pass client to it so client equals client here we go it's already imported there we go and just paste that back in so what's happening is that we are wrapping it inside of Apollo provider so that the client that we have exported here, all of the configuration of Apollo client that we have created and instantiated um, is going to be then available to the Apollo provider and then client will be available to all of the components and the query can then be made easily. All right. Awesome. This is great. So now let's go ahead and console this site URL to see if we are getting that console let's see what we get url yep there you go so can you see that you have got the localhost 8020 over here which is great and then you, you pass the slash graphql okay it okay great so perfect so you've got our apollo client set up and in the next video we'll start adding our queries uh, we'll start fetching menus for us and then we'll continue further. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Uh, please do give star to my repository to support my work and hit the follow button to follow me on GitHub like all the other beautiful people have. All right, so I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye.